Well, applying for a new job is almost always nerve-wracking, but when you are forced to endure jeering from dozens of disgruntled employees, it adds a whole new dimension of jitters. But that didn't deter a slow but steady stream of prospective market basket employees from showing up today for a job fair aimed at replacing workers who've walked off the job. A 17-year-old applicant told us, despite weeks of intense media coverage, she was surprised to encounter such a large crowd. My mom dropped me off, and then since I saw the angry mob over there, I just like snuck my way into through here to go to the office. They said that uh, earlier they had a lot of people, but while I was in there, there was only like five of us. Well, it's disappointing to see that there are people from the outside that are willing to come in. Um, there's, there's not a lot you can do about it, but you just have to stand to your convictions. Well, as you know, the employees are protesting the ouster of CEO Arthur T. DeMoulis, whose only published comments throughout the ordeal have come by way of written statements. The pair that replaced Arthur T. atop the market basket food chain also stayed out of the public eye. The new co-CEOs come with distinct business backgrounds. James Cooch resigned as CEO of Radio Shack in 2012 after the electronics retailer reported a $21 million loss. Prior to that, Cooch worked for the parent company of Sears and Kmart. His new counterpart, Felicia Thornton, formerly headed the education company Knowledge Universe and has experience in the grocery industry from various positions at Kroger, Albertsons, and Ralph's. So will this duo have a chance to salvage the supermarket chain, or are we past the point of no return? Here to discuss that are Shirley Leung. She's a business columnist for the Boston Globe. And George Donnelly is the executive editor of the Boston Business Journal. Welcome to Greater Boston. Thanks for having us. Well, these two are clearly way, way behind the scenes. Nobody could have put, put their names out there. They were in the Globe today, but it really isn't about them, is it, Shirley? I mean, I, I guess they've been organizing some of these job fairs, and they probably have a public relations strategy team working right. on it. But when it all comes down, it is between these two cousins. Yes, it is. And, um, you know, I'm surprised that it, it's been, what, two or three weeks now? Yeah, I think three. Three weeks. And um, really, like I wrote today, that mm -hmm. it's not about business, it's personal. Yeah. And, you know, forget about the numbers. They're both multimillionaires by any standards. And really, it's about forgiveness. You know, Artie, <laughs> forgiveness, <laughs> seriously. That's so naive. <laughs> forgiveness and vengeance. We're past that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's about vengeance. It's a vengeance. To, so you said, you said, it, you said it, a simple I'm sorry. Really? Do you think that would work? <laughs> I don't think they do you think they've said it to each other? Oh, I think I think during the first <laughs> trial back in the 80s, there was an attempt at that when they yeah. were trying to sort out who got the most billions, but I think they're past that. <laughs> so, George, what do you think? Do you think? <laughs> don't, don't pass the buck here. I mean, no, really, when, when that trial was going on, I, you know, I think it was actually Judge Maria Lopez, who was right. a friend of mine at the time, um, was trying to sort that thing out. And I think yeah. there were some, you know, genuine efforts to kind of make that bridge happen. But yeah. The money was so big, even then, there was so much at stake. Right. Well, it's also about, it is about the money, ultimately. It is going to be about the money. And I also think it's not just about <clears throat> the Arthurs. It's also about the Arthurs, the different Arthur camps. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think that sooner or later, and I think sooner rather than later, someone in the Arthur S. camp mm -hmm. is going to act in his or her own economic self-interest here. Because w we reported in the fall that... Um, uh, so Market Basket uh, pays out about $100 million in dividends to the family a year, on average, as it was. What happens when that dividend check goes down to, mm -hmm. you know, in total, $5 million or nothing? Because of what's happening Because right of what's now. happening now. So... So the Arthur folks, S, just to be clear, the Arthur S. camp is the one who's currently in charge, who ousted the Arthur T. So somebody from that camp is going to defect because they want to sell the thing. They want to sell it. They want, they want their money. Yeah. They, they're happy to get their dividend, but when you take their dividend away, right. they're going to go, this isn't working. So that's, that, if the workers hold on long enough, mm -hmm. may be one of the end games here. You know, one of the things being bandied about, Shirley, is that Arthur T. has kind of been writing on the laurels of all this loyalty. Yes. But he hasn't publicly been out there. Now, is that by strategy, design? Could he Could he go out there and join the employees and say, we'll straighten this out, I'll be back, I'll make up for your lost wages? Or is it smart for him to just sit back right now? Well, I think it's a strategy. I mean, if I feel like if RDT really cared about the company, saving the company and saving the employees' jobs, he would tell them to go back to the, job, go yeah. back to the jobs right now, go, 
you know, work, you know, get the companies up mm. and running. Um, but instead, I feel like by holding out, he's really trying to, um, you know, create more leverage for him for, for to for buy himself, the company yeah. for himself. He's really watching out mm. for himself right now. Well, as you said, George, in one of your columns, I mean, this is really a point of, it's, it's, it's a matter of attrition, because right. at some point, how many millions can you lose daily? Uh, um, one of our reporters was up there today, Adam Riley, and he actually brought us back some bags of junk food, which apparently there's quite a bit of that. There's plenty of it there. You know, some of it was from Thailand, I think. But anyway, um, there was no fresh produce, there was no fresh meats, but there was junk in there, and there was people still kind of milling about. So, but I mean, they can't sustain that. No, I mean, various reports about the uh, loss of revenue somewhere between uh, 75 percent to 90 percent. I've seen various things. Yeah, and and you do the math there. That adds up to millions a day mm -hmm. uh, in, in probably lost profits. So one of the things, again, it's, I, I come back to the money. So a year ago, the Arthur S. Camp mm -hmm. uh, helped facilitate and help push once they took control of the board to get a one-time $300 million distribution to mm -hmm. the shareholders. Mm -hmm. So I think that because, because the company was doing so well, you know, and, and there's so much money around and, and Arthur T's philosophy has been, for the most part, plow the money back into the yes. business, plow it back into the employees, let's drive, you know, let's keep a low overhead, let's own our properties, and I think getting that $300 million dividend was a sign from the Arthur S. Camp to basically say, mm. hey, we, we want to get paid here. Well, they did get paid, and now they have control, but they've drained, probably drained their coffers, and I think that's why I don't think that they can hold they can out sustain. on their end that much longer. Y the other thing, Shirley, is that Arthur S. doesn't seem interested at all in running the business. Mm -hmm. Arthur T. does. He was the one who was running it. He'd like to go back and run it. Why wouldn't he? Is it just vengefulness <laughs> again, revenge? Or, you know, just he, he wouldn't give it up because Arthur T. wants it so badly? Because he clearly he's got these two new CEOs in there. He doesn't want to run the business. Yeah, Arthur S. doesn't want to run the business. But RDT, by all accounts, has been, it sounds like he's been a fantastic mm -hmm. CEO. I mean, market basket in the industry, um, you know, by far is incredibly profitable. Um, Arthur T. Is, is very much like his father, Mike mm -hmm. DeMoulis, who built the chain. I mean, he, was, he drives a hard bargain. He's um, able to drive. Um, I mean, when you talk to people in the grocery business, Market Basket, their prices are so low. I know. I can't believe that. Not only that, they're lower than wholesalers. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's cheaper for you to go to Market Basket and buy milk and then sell it somewhere else. I, I heard a great piece on WBZA. I mean, it was just a fantastic piece. I mean, comparing everything from Windex to a head yeah. of lead. I yeah. mean, yeah. Windex at uh, Hannaford's 447 right. at, at uh, at Market Basket, two forty nine, something right. like that, and then take four percent off yeah. everything you buy. Yeah. After that, you take yeah. it all, and then here's your four percent discount. Yeah. So yeah, so in in some ways, what's made this such an amazing story is that Market Basket is is in the in the grocery business in a way sui generis, hmm. and they are they are <laughs> creating they've create, created themselves into a community institution mm -hmm. that is providing an incredible service to something everybody really needs, and so this fiasco is taking serious dollars out of a lot of people's pockets. Well, on top of a lot of other things. It's been the only news story all summer, right. Right, really, because everything is media. That's exactly right. So my guess is they'll drag this out through Labor Day. <laughs> Shirley Leung, George Donnelly, thanks so much for Thank you. coming.